really delighted to introduce in their first Canadian spectacular of the season my two favorite comedians. And just between the two of us, I know that this is going to be a, a really big show. Mm -hmm. uh, ex excuse me, yes. Hello, John. Hi. 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 Isn't it a really big shoe? Yeah, it's, you know, you know, it's going to be a really big, really big shoe. shoe. <laughs> That's it. Well, Frank, uh, who in the world talks like that? <laughs> sure. Oh. Show sure, now, you fellas both have had dramatic training here up at the university and in yeah, England. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Show. Show. Yeah. Of course. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so here, ladies and gentlemen, Wayne and Shoster. <laughs> Tonight, the CBC, in a brazen attempt to get bigger laughs and higher ratings, proudly present Wayne and Schuster, the first hundred years. Welcome to Wayne and Schuster, the first hundred years. Now, I think that all of us will agree that this is a silly title. After all, Johnny and I weren't around that long. Just seemed like it. Anyway, let's talk about the first days of television. Now, back in the 50s, he was our first Canadian test pattern. In the early black and white days, we had a tradition. We always started the show with a musical number. Why not? The stars of our show, Johnny Wayne and Frank Schuster. <laughs> That marvelous French wonderland. What is it like in the south of France? It's like Montreal with sand. Sand? That's that? how you sing French songs. With you the put U. the U on oh, the I end. Yeah. In fact, my singing has been compared to Maurice. Chevalier? No, Richard. Oh, I, I play hockey like Chevalier. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Quickly! Shall we? It's delightful. Oui, oui. It's the place for you and me. See you later, girl. If you look, you see the people from Paris playing on the Riviera. When there's ice and snow, it's nice to need to go. Well, the moon, clear the loon is clear. All the girls uh -huh. are gay and they parlay français. Anytime, any place, anywhere. If you want another kiss, but you don't think that you should. On the Riviera, ho, oh, oh, ho, you would. If you're just out the bus stop and see what life can give, the place to live is the Riviera. Of course, as well as music, the show had some very distinguished guests. Charles Darwin, Oscar Wilde. We were honored by Queen Victoria and her escort, King Clancy. King Clancy replay. Chippendale, a wonderful party. Just a moment, aren't you surprised to see that we've changed places? Nah, I could never tell you guys apart anyway. <laughs> Yes, we had that great Spanish hero, Zorro. Tonight, we're here to celebrate this country's national holiday, Ricardo Montalban's birthday. <laughs> and what have we here? <clears throat> the new dills are out. <laughs> As some of you may know, one of our favorite pastimes was doing our versions of major motion pictures. There was that Oscar-winning feature film, Bridge on the River Kwai. Our title, Kwai Mia River. The time is 1943, and this is the most infamous prisoner of war camp in occupied Burma, the hated Camp Wadishmata. This Japanese officer is the brutal camp commandant, the sadistic Colonel Matsu. Corporal Suzuki! Corporal Suzuki! How you call me, Colonel Matsu? No, I call you Corporal Suzuki. I'm Colonel Matsu. <laughs> uh, something wrong, Honorable Colonel? I have here very discouraging report about you. 
Have you been beating the prisoners? Oh, no, Colonel. Have you been starving them? Uh, no. Have you been torturing them? Oh, no, Colonel. I do nothing like that. That's what I mean. Very discouraging. <laughs> A little more brutality, Suzuki. This isn't Hogan's heroes. Yes, Colonel. Akashima. <laughs> You've broken every rule of the Geneva Convention. Why, you're nothing but a low, despicable, contemptible, sadistic swine. Flattery will not get you special treatment, Captain. <laughs> when are the new prisoners arriving? <laughs> Who knows when they will crawl into camp. I am having them march 300 miles. 300 miles? Colonel Matsu! You call me Corporal Suzuki? Uh, no, I call you Colonel Matsu. I'm uh, Corporal Suzuki. <laughs> All right, what is it? The new prisoners come. What? So soon? Oh. Up on your feet! Perhaps you are not aware of who I am. I am Colonel Hideki Matsu. Oh, you're the brutal camp commandant. Well, how do you do? Never mind, how do you do? You struck a British officer. Sir, Major? Sir! Take his name and number for after the war. Sir! Please sit down. Careful drink. No, thank you. Perhaps some food? Colonel Matsu, you didn't invite me here to ply me with sake and sukiyaki. <laughs> right, right. I come right to point. I want some information. Oh? What is your regiment? I am very sorry, but according to the Geneva Convention, I'm only required to give you my name, rank, and number. You already know my name and rank. My number is Walnut 53311. That is not enough. Very well, I'll let you have the area code. It's 416. But that's as far as I'll go. Colonel Pfeiffer, I happen to know that you are a member of Royal Dental Corps. I see. How did you discover I was a member of the Royal Dental Corps? <laughs> you, you are wearing insignia. <laughs> you clever devil. <laughs> well, what if I am a dental officer? You can help me. Oh? Next week I have a big dinner party for my Commander-in-Chief General Moto. The famous General Moto. Oh, yes, now this dinner can help boost my stock, you understand. Oh, yes, and General Moto's stock is very valuable, yes. I, I own Chrysler and Ford myself, but it's all in the big three. Unfortunately, I am having trouble with my teeth. Oh. Last week I broke a partial denture. Uh, let's here. have a look at it. Here, just open up there. Oh, yes, so oh, you are. Yes, well, oh, yes, what a shoddy job. This is made in Japan. <laughs> now, I need a new denture for this important dinner party, so I ask you to make me a new upper plate. Are you asking me, here in this appalling Burmese wilderness, to build you a denture without a dental lab, without technicians? Precisely. In other words, you want me to build you a bridge on the River Kwai? <laughs> Excuse me, Colonel. Good heavens, they've captured Farley Moet. <laughs> no, 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 it's Captain Bentley. Oh, Bentley, of course, yes. You're not serious, sir, about making him that denture? Indeed I am, yes. Then you're going to give in. You're actually going to build him that bridge? Yes, I am going to build him that bridge, and then I'm going to blow up that bridge. Blow up that bridge? Yes. What do you mean? Well, I wasn't wasting my time in that hot box. Here's a little model I've been experimenting with. You see, his bridge comes right yes, over here. Sir, right? in there, the gunpowder and the five-second fuse. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was a close one, wasn't it? Colonel Pfeiffer? You called me Colonel Matsu? No, no I, I called, called you Colonel, Colonel Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. <laughs> Look at it. The general is here. Is my bridge ready? Yes, right here. Here oh, it is, old boy. Good. Turn around. Let's see if we can get it. Now, eat gently, gently. There oh. you are. How's that? Mm. Mm. Uh, not bad. I'll find out at the dinner. Oh, don't worry. It'll be bang up, old boy. Oh. Bang up. <laughs> What's happening, Colonel? They're gathering around the table and giving a toast to the Emperor. Now the food is being served. There goes the Colonel. He's lifting a spoonful to his mouth. He's taking his first bite. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, there you are, chaps. 
That colonel shot his mouth out for the last time. <laughs> this... <laughs> Big joke. <laughs> Just a minute, old man. Would you open your mouth again, please? Good heavens, he's got every single tooth left in his mouth. Incredible. Hey, strange. Oh, well. Potty, quick. Wait for it. I'll give you the whistle and off we go. March. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Did you say he had every tooth in his mouth? Yes. Amazing. You know, it could be the crest. <laughs> Nineteen forty-one, our first year on local radio. We gave household hints to housewives. However, there was a bigger show going on. It was called World War II, and Johnny and I were assigned to the Canadian Army show. Pack up your troubles in your old kit bag and smile, smile, smile. While you folks are heard to light your flag, smile, boys. This is nothing. Wait till we go overseas. 1950. It's after the war and we're back on radio. However, we get a phone call. It's from New York City, CBS. They want us to make a guest appearance on television. Why not? Incidentally, the host was a young kid called Jack Lemon. It's a real pleasure to bring on our next guest. They're the two boys that do the Tony Radio Show up in Canada. I know if you've ever heard them, you've really loved them. They're here in New York now doing an extensive study in television for Canadian industry. And here they are, Johnny Wayne and Frank Schuster. Hi, fellas. Nice to be here. Well, it's good to have you here. I guess you fellas have been pretty busy here in town, huh, studying television? Oh, yeah, Jack, we yeah. haven't wasted a minute. Yeah. No, as soon as we got here, went to the hotel room, turned all the lights down, and we've been watching. Really, it's wonderful entertainment. Yeah, what have you been watching? The girl next door. I... <laughs> she's no Ed Sullivan, but she's all right. What do you... I thought you guys were very interested in television. Oh, we are. Oh, yeah. yes. As a matter of fact, I just bought myself a portable television set. Well, no, it's a great thing. I'm taking it back home. Frank, you got a portable television set in there? Well, certainly, haven't you ever seen? It's a great thing. I love it. Uh, it's <laughs> gonna be a shame to yourself. <laughs> and Arthur Godfrey's everywhere. Well, it's no secret that television was exciting. It was a world of magic. At long last, our dream. Freedom to do shtick. Something familiar, something peculiar, something for everyone are coming tonight. What earthly use would this be in a garage? Oh, it's also a car wash. Johnny and I loved the new medium because we could experiment with the camera. Now, here's one of our early sketches.
50s, the top rated shows were the westerns. Buenos dias. Lee Trevino. <laughs> you are brave gringo to insult the fastest gun in Mexico takes a lot of chutzpah. A lot of what? Chutzpah. How come you can say Mexico and you can't say chutzpah? <laughs> Occasionally, we welcome guest stars from Montreal. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin tonight's show, we have a very special announcement. Right, John? Yes, we've been invited to have the show perform on the French network of the CBC, Le Réseau Français de Radio-Canada. And so, for the first time in, in, in our history, right. the Wayne and Schuster Hour will be seen on both CBC networks across the country. Thank you. Thank you. We think it's a very great honor. Yes, we're very pleased. And, and Excusez-moi, monsieur, je suis Paul Berval du Réseau Français. Monsieur Berval? Paul Berval du Réseau Français. Et je suis venu vous dire que nous sommes enchantés d'être avec vous ici ce soir. Merci beaucoup, vous êtes très gentil. <rire> Mais je, je vous en prie, mon cher monsieur, c'est très gentil de votre part d'accepter l'invitation du Réseau Français. <rire> What did he say? He says that he's Paul Berval of the French Network and they're delighted that we could appear with them. Oh, that's nice. Well, tell them the pleasure is all ours. Uh, mon ami a dit que le plaisir est pour nous. Non, 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 j'insiste. Le plaisir est pour nous, vous... du Réseau Français. <rire> vous êtes trop amable. Uh, what did he say? He insists that the pleasure is all theirs. Oh. Oh, well, uh, tell them the opportunity for us to appear on the French network is a, is a great moment in our career. <laughs> uh, mon ami vous assure uh, que le fait de jouer sur les réseaux français est un grand événement dans notre carrière. Oh, that's very gracious of you, my dear sir. And it is my most sincere hope that this will be the first of many television performances we can schedule on our network. Qu'est-ce qu'il dit? Il espère que cette émission sera la première d'une série euh, à laquelle nous aurons le plaisir de participer tous les deux. Oh, soyez assurés, hey, mon cher monsieur. Dans l'avenir, il nous fera présenter à tous nos compatriotes uh, d'autres émissions de Wayne et Schuster sur les réseaux français et anglais. What did he say? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there, in a nutshell, is what is wrong with this country. We just don't understand each other. I don't mean him and me. I mean him and me. What? You just blew confederation, you fool! Sometimes we danced. small step for man, one giant hernia for Schuster. <laughs> and sometimes we sang. Did you ever get up in the morning and stub your toe getting out of bed? And you cut yourself shaving. And the coffee tastes like it was drained out of an old Pontiac. <laughs> and the bank phones to tell you you're overdrawn. And on your way home, you're picked up three times in three different speed traps, bringing your total demerits to 78. <laughs> Well, you're no different from the rest of us. Even the very best of us have days when we should have stood in bed. Did you ever have one of those days? Did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days when everything goes wrong? Did you ever have one of those days? Did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days when everything goes wrong? Napoleon at Waterloo, the end was clearly near. Wellington had smashed his front, the Prussians stormed his rear. His cavalry was in retreat, his infantry had cracked. And when he saw that all was lost, how did Napoleon react? <laughs> Did he sigh? Did he cry? Did he scream and lose his head? No, all he did was raise his hands. And this is what he said. Did you ever have one of those days? Did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days when everything goes wrong? <laughs> did you ever have one of those days? Did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days when everything goes wrong? It's ancient Rome, the eyes of March, a most historic day. 
Julius Caesar's just been stabbed. You must have seen the play. A dozen daggers in his back. <laughs> he knew that he was through. And with his very final breath, what did the emperor do? Did he moan? Did he groan? Did he bellow? Did he roar? All he did was say, Et tu brute. Which is simply Latin for... Did you ever have one of those days? <laughs> did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days? When everything goes wrong. I told him once, I told him a thousand times, Julie, don't go! Did you, did you ever have one, one of those days? days? Did you ever have one of those terrible days? Did you ever have one of those days? When everything, everything, everything goes wrong. We'll be right back. Although it was true we were brought up in a comedy variety world, we had our serious moments. For instance, we had a series devoted to drama. <laughs> Family Theater. Yes, Family Theater, bringing you violence, brutality, and all those good things we've come to expect from television. There were many forms of drama. In the world of science fiction, we told a story of a mad scientist who built a robot out of computer parts, but with a live brain. But something goes wrong. I have plans. Plans? We're mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore. <laughs> Slowly, the revolt of the machines gains momentum around the world. London. Paris. Broadway. In our comedy world, crime ran rampant. For instance, I enjoyed playing the Godfather. We see him celebrating his daughter's wedding, and the family is posed for the picture. Let me know when you're gonna take the picture. Ready? Now. <laughs> it should be a good picture. <laughs> Johnny and I occasionally teamed up as detectives. Starsky and Hutch, turned into Scruffy and Schmutz. These two men are cops, the new breed, streetwise, street tough. Gone is the smart uniform and the shiny badge, too much of a giveaway when you're fighting the underworld of the 70s. This is Detective Angelo Scruffy and his partner, Detective Sheldon Schmutz. And they dress this way to confuse the underworld. They've got everybody fooled. Even their best friends don't know they're cops or that they get their clothes at the Hadassah Bazaar. <laughs> And of course, no crime show would be complete without that brilliant duo of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Here's one of their all-time classics. The singular unpleasantness at Monty Hall. <laughs> I've come to you all together here at Monty Hall because at long last, I have solved my most baffling case, the brutal murder of Sir Charles Monty. Only one person could have done it. And that person is in this room. And who is that person, Holmes? Who else, my dear Watson, but the victim's wife? <gasps> Lady Monty? Precisely. But, but, but how did you deduce that? Elementary, my dear Watson. You will recall, on the night of the murder, the rather puzzling behavior of Lord Monty's pet, Caesar. Caesar did not bark. Well, so what if he didn't bark? The murderer, therefore, was no stranger to Caesar. Of course. Fantastic, Holmes. It was you, Lady Monty, wasn't it? You are the murderess. It's obvious. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Perhaps a bit too obvious. <laughs> Yes, but Holmes, what about Caesar? What about Caesar? Well, he didn't bark. Of course not. Caesar is a Shetland pony. <laughs> and Holmes, who killed Lord Monty? A clever adversary. One with the cunning of 
Shall we say a Cambridge Don? <laughs> Not Don Cambridge. <laughs> exactly. You see, the noted professor was engaged in extracurricular, extramarital hanky panky with Lady Monte. In other words, they were fooling around. <laughs> Holmes, how did you deduce that? From this note, an innocent enough little message to a layman, but to a trained sleuth like myself, proof positive that they intended to murder her husband and run away together. Well, what does it say? Let's murder your husband and run away together. <laughs> of course. Fantastic, Holmes. <laughs> you, Don Cambridge, are the murderer. No! <laughs> but we mustn't jump to conclusions, must we? <laughs> The, the only person left in this room is Strange Ways. Well, Strange Ways, the finger finally points to you. Good heavens, Holmes, you mean? Exactly. The, the butler, butler did it. it. <laughs> Fantastic, Holmes. <laughs> Holmes, it seems that none of them did it. That's it. That's it. Well, what does it all mean? Can't you see? There's only one possible explanation. It's crystal clear. Well, well, what is it? We're in the wrong bloody house. <laughs> of course. Fantastic, Holmes. Oh, shut up. <laughs> we'll be right back. Over the years, we've received a lot of letters from a lot of fans requesting their favorite sketches. Well, Johnny and I had a favorite, too. Tonight, we proudly present a musical fable recreating how Johnny Wayne and Frank Schuster became partners. Oh, you got to be joking. No, Frank. I'm serious, Marty. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind about it. Come on, now. I've been an agent for over 20 years, and I've heard a lot of theories about comedy. But this has got to be the wildest theory I've heard yet. Now, wait a minute. It's not theory. It's fact. Comedians are not born. They're made. Why can't Canadians teach their children how to laugh? This nation's population is too serious by half. To get a Canadian to just so much as smile is like asking Judy Lamarche to run the mile. The Englishman laughs at trouble. The Frenchman laughs at danger. The Americans laugh at Gilligan's Island, which is even stranger. But tell jokes in Canada. They'll write your epitaph. Oh, why can't Canadians learn to set a good example and laugh? You're telling me that a comedian has to be taught. That's right. Why, well, I could pick up anybody off the street and turn him into a great comedian, a star. Off the street? Off the street. I have got $500 that says that you can't. You have got yourself a bet. Oh, you have just lost yourself $500. <laughs> OK, Waller, and a boy, four more. Come on, four. Whoa! Now, remember what you said. You can take anybody off the street, turn them into a great comedian. I said anybody, I meant anybody. <laughs> How about him? The garbage man? You said anybody. Yeah, but he's not anybody. He's nobody. <laughs> All right, the bet stands. Call him over. I'll talk to him. Oh, uh, excuse me. Oh, yes, sir. Now, what's your name? Huh? What's your name? Oh, my name is Wayne. Wayne? Yes, sir. Well, look, Wayne, uh, the gentleman over there would like to talk to you. Uh, who, who's he? Who's he? You mean you don't recognize him? He happens to be the funniest man in Canada. No kidding. Oh, boy. Uh, hey, it's, it's an honor to meet you, Mr. Diefenbaker. <laughs> I've laughed at your speeches many times, the way you go. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. I'm not 
not Diefenbaker. You're not? No, my name is Schuster. Oh, Schuster Baker. No, no, no. Just Schuster. Just Schuster. And I've got a... Uh... An interesting proposition for you, kid. Oh? How would you like to start a brand new, exciting career and become a comedian? A comedian? That's right, a comedy star. And, 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 and give up this? <laughs> give up what? You're a garbage man. Please, I'm a sanitary disposal engineer. All I want is to drive the truck far away from the mire and muck. Then, with a bit of luck, I wouldn't be so slovenly. <laughs> All day long, up and down the street, never leaving the driver's seat. Clean face, clean hands, clean feet. I wouldn't be so slovenly. I beg your pardon, sir. Ah, yes, Henshaw. There is a strange person outside who wishes to speak to you, sir. He arrived in the back of a large truck. It's the garbage man. Shall I set the dogs on him, sir? Oh, no, no, Henshaw. <laughs> no, not at all. Send them in. In here, sir. That's right. Send the garbage man in here. Very well, sir. a chance to try my little experiment. Oh, you mean the bet still stands? $500? Make it a thousand. Oh, 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 you have got a deal. <laughs> Mr. Wayne. And now, the attempt to turn a garbage man into a great comedy star. No, 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 no. Now say it again and say it until you learn it. Who was that lady I saw you with last night? That was, no, lady, that was my wife. <laughs> no! Come on now, Frank, take it easy on the boy. You've been bugging him now for three months. Look, I made a bet with you I could turn this kid into a comedian. I'm going to do it. All right, now, once again, who was that lady I saw you with last night? To keep her pants up. <laughs> Look, I made a bet. All right, now, once again. Who? Was that lady I saw you with last night? That was no lady. That was my wife. <laughs> Again. That was no lady. That was my wife. Tell it to him. That was no lady. That was my wife. I think he's got it. You're right, he's got it. That was no lady. That was my wife. By George, he's got it. By George, he's got it. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. <laughs> and why was the fireman buried in a red coffin? Because he died. Because he died. <laughs> that was no lady. That was my wife. That was no lady. That was my wife. the bet you owe me a thousand dollars oh now wait a minute wait a minute you haven't won this bet yet well, what do you mean oh okay so the kid's funny in the living room but you got to test him out in front of an audience mm, all right when's my next date uh sunday you're on the sullivan show sunday sullivan all right i'll take him with me we'll work as a team <laughs> mr schuster's residence Oh, yes, sir, I expect them momentarily. They took the first flight after the Ed Sullivan show. Hey, come on in, gang. Oh, we're going to have a lunch tonight. Hey, come on in, gang. Come on. <laughs> well, my friends, did I or did I not make that kid a star? Congratulations, Frank Schuster.
could have laughed all night and still have yelled for more. I simply said, hello, and half the second row were rolling on the floor. There hasn't been so great a din of laughter since Cassius Clay's last TV fight. Everyone there went wild. Why, Ed himself, one smile. They could have laughed, 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 laughed. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. <laughs> splendid, old man, splendid. All night. Well, Frank, you won your bet. Here's your money. No hard feelings, Marty. Now, I want to talk to you about this new contract. Hey, Frank. Because... Hey, I had a great idea for our next routine. What? We get into togas and we do Julius Caesar. And, and, and this girl comes and just she me. says, When I told him, Julie, don't go. Now, just, just a minute, kid. Well, uh, what new routine? Well, I, I figured now that we're partners, wait I should... A minute, wait a minute, hold it. Are you kidding? Look, it was just a bet. I bet Marty that I could make you a comedian, right? Well, I did it. Now, Marty, you see now... You mean... This... You mean we're not partners? What partners? Well, I thought that, you Please, know... Please, kid, do you mind? Run along, I'm busy. Well, what's going to happen to me? Well, you'll go back to being a garbage man. Yeah, but you, 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 you taught me how to tell jokes. So you'll be a funny garbage man. <laughs> well, I thought, you know... Well, if you mind, kid, I, I'm busy. Nightmare. I, I know I'm going to wake up tomorrow and find this has all been a terrible sketch. <laughs> all right, so the kid's funny. But you know me. I work alone. I know, Frank. But for a minute, there was that touch of magic up there. Look, Marty, will you stop bugging me? I'm going for a walk. It was just a bet. That's all it was. It was a bet. All right, so he's funny. So he's got a sense of humor. So what? Look, I'm a single. I work alone. I don't need a partner. And yet, I've grown accustomed to his farce. <laughs> His corny double takes, the faces that he makes, his gags, his tricks, his jokes, his shticks are second nature to me now. In some strange way I, I can't define. He's just a cheap buffoon, the kind you'll find on any TV show. I'll be ten times better off without that nut. Although... I've grown accustomed to his jokes, accustomed to his jests, accustomed to his farce. <laughs> hey, Johnny. Hey, John. Oh, Frank. Look, John, I've been wanting to talk to you. I, I made a terrible mistake. I want us to be partners. Partners? Do you really mean that? I never meant anything more in my life. I want us to be partners. Okay, but I drive the truck. <laughs> well, I got seniority. No, no, no. I don't mean in the garbage business. I'm talking about show business. Well, show business. I don't know. Oh, no, I don't. Kid, I know what you're thinking, but I'm going to make it up to you. From now on, you're going to be a full partner. 
full partner. You know what that means? That means equal billing. Equal billing? 50-50. 50-50? And I'll tell you what. What? Any change you want to make, you can make. Any change I want to make, I can make. Right. Now, what do you say? Okay, Frank. Ha <laughs> great. We open in this theater tomorrow night. Wow. And I got a surprise for you. What, Come on, what, what, Wait a minute. What? Pops, light up the marquee. <laughs> John, what do you say? Schuster and Wayne. Frank. Yeah? I think I've got the first change. <laughs> we'll be right back. No matter how many years it was, Johnny and I certainly had a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. And it goes without saying, a lot of memories. Hi, babies. Hi, Claudius. What's new? Nothing much. What are you drinking? Give me a martinis. <laughs> you mean martini. If I want two, I'll ask for them. <laughs> Attention, this is your captain speaking. Economy passengers may now leave the plane. Attention, first class passengers. Fasten your seat belt. The plane will be landing in eight minutes. <laughs> Lend me your ears. The game begins and we must win. And win we shall. All hail Stratford. All hail Stratford. <laughs> A manager's blessing upon you all. And for your captain, Noble Rocky, give me your hand. Tis gladly given. Play well, valiant captain. Now remember, today's game is being televised. Televised? And the TV shall record each passing play. TV or not TV, that is not the question. We shall play with might and main! Yeah! Well, that's about it. It was quite a career. We traveled from the year 1941 all the way to a brand new century. And there are so many thank yous to make. Talented people behind the cameras and the equally talented people in front. They were all family and we thank them. And of course, most important of all, our audience, who put up with us for over 50 years. Or was it 100? Anyway, Johnny thanks you, and I thank you. Good night. We hope that you'll be a booster for Wayne and Schuster once a month. When we drop in to call And now the time is fleeting And so until our very next meeting Good night all